This next card features some really pretty Lavinia stamps and a very simple background. It takes seconds to do and this is how I did it. I've cut some acrylic cardstock and I'll tell you a little more about this in a moment using the nesting optican die that I used earlier on. It's by Lifestyle Crafts and you get a whole set of these dies inside and they give you the most fantastic shaped cards. So that's the topper. A little bit more about the paper. This is acrylic pad, canvas textured paper for artists. Mm -hmm. It's, um, as you can see, £140 or 300 GSM. Uh, it's acid free and I've found that it's quite slick because it's acrylic cardstock and the paint uh, moves across the surface, or brush rows do anyway, really well. So, uh, and also it's quite a weighty cardstock so that you can get away with using a fair amount of water on it. I really enjoy using this cardstock and it's one of my favourites. The Lavinia stamps I'm using are called Spotty Toadstools and they're very pretty indeed. I'm using three brush -o paints in yellow, lime, lime green, yellow and rose red. So we'll try those to begin with. I'm also using a mini mister spray and the secret weapon is an acrylic block with a handle but you can use an acrylic block without a handle if you want to or even just straight down onto your mat with the paint and lay the cardstock on and this is what I did. Let's move those out of the way and that as well and the cardstock. <clears throat> Sprinkle the paint in any which way you want to. Be careful um, with that rose, it's quite a vibrant colour and just sprinkle it on, get the mini mister I think I may have made that a bit too wet but we'll see because you want it to splodge as it goes down <laughs> soon find out bring the cardstock back in turn it over and whop it on and then press get some kitchen towel handy, take the card off, move that out of the way, move that out of the way. Now if you use kitchen towel to mop up the topper on your card um, it will take all the colour out and I don't want to do that, I like to air dry it so that it dries a quite a vibrant colour but I do need to remove some of the water it's far too wet but other than that those of you that um, look at my cards and thank you very much for the comments you leave me on Facebook, Pinterest and everywhere else that I'm all over like a rash um, know that I like white space and so consequently, I'm not putting any more on, any more colour onto this card. I'm going to leave it like that. And I actually will, in, in this instance, because I want to stamp on it, I will dry it with a heat gun now. And, uh, and you'll see just how much of the colour it takes away. If you want to, and you want to add more colour, just clean off your acrylic block. Uh, whop some more paint on, a little bit more spray and do the same again, but I think you'll agree it's quite a nice effect. Gun now, I'm just going over the top. I think the paint is set enough so that it won't really uh, uh, lose the vibrancy of the colour. Going to do the back as well and again. Turn that off. Now I will add some, a little bit more colour to this. Say for instance that you've 
you've done an area and you think, oh, that's good, that's nice, but there's another area that you're not very keen on. You can add some more paint to that area in layers, and because it's transparent, the, um, the paints, they will layer up and you'll still get that water effect underneath. The only colours that you need to avoid mixing together are purple, any of the purples, or I think it's violet and purple, and any of the greens, of which there's a good oh, four or five of those, they hate each other. They really do. One dose of purple and green mixed together, and what do you get? Mud. So be very careful with that. And as it happens, I'm using a little bit of green now. I'm going to use the side of my mat lay it down, use a paintbrush and then just just put a little bit of it on, a little bit more water and, it, and, and just to add interest if there's too much red I think there but look how that, if you can see how that comes underneath can you see how it goes underneath? The translucent, sort of transparent effect. Maybe not. I don't think the camera's picking it up very well, but trust me, it's quite a nice effect underneath there. And that is all I'm going to do to that. So you can go on adding colour in layers with a paintbrush as, as much as you like. Yes, that's quite nice. A little bit more heat from the heat gun. Dry that off. Thank you very much. Move that out of the way. And then we're going on to the stamping. And for this I'm using my stamp press and black archival ink. Taking one of the images, just going to damp it down with the baby wipe. It's a fairly new stamp and it's uh, self-clinging, but it did need a a little bit of help there as well, it's too dry. Pop that on there. Into the middle of your stamp press. I'm sure that you're bored with this now, those of you that use a stamp press. Keep all the pressure in the middle. And don't be tempted to help it along by pressing the orange spongy bits on the outside four corners so now that's another thing look at your image against a clean piece of paper so I've got that in the middle near enough and look at it and turn it around do you like that with the splodge at the bottom or at that side I'm liking that side. I don't know why, but I do. I like that side better. It looks better balanced to me. Or at the top. So spin it around as, as much as you like and, until you're happy that you've found an area that you, uh, you want to go with. But yes, I'm happy with that. So just apply a little bit more ink then. a little bit there and down she goes and I'm really pressing very firmly because this cardstock is textured the acrylic card and so it will need a little bit of a helping hand hmm, that's nice not absolutely brilliant because the of the texture of the cardstock but it's okay I might need an ink pad that is maybe a little juicier We'll see how this comes out. I 
I bend all the stamps around, move them around a bit because they're clear and uh, they're easy to manipulate. Oh yes, that's come out a little bit better. And then one final one, I'm going to use the smaller one. And I'm going to keep that quite straight. Same rules as always with your images. One, three, five, seven, four hundred and eighty-four. You know, however many you like, as long as it's an odd number. And I think I'll lay that there. Yes, that that's looking quite interesting. Now to finish it off. I'm going to dot, I'm no good at drawing, but I want to put some of that line image that I've missed back in. And if I just do downward strokes as if I'm drawing, I'll ruin it because I can't even draw literally a straight line. So I do lots of little dots and it gives me more control and it, it, it also looks a lot better than squiggly lines that have all gone wrong and ruined the original image. But that's how I fill in sometimes when the stamp hasn't quite laid down enough ink. So just dot it. Yes, that's good. So, now you've got a choice now. You can colour in using any sort of medium that you like, even the brushes themselves, those um, images, or you can use bleach. I like using bleach. It works quite well with the brushes, as long as you don't go mad. It doesn't like the bleach to be too strong so I might add a little bit of water to it. Or you can use other mediums, and on this occasion I'm going to use some Rangers White Enamel Accents, one of my favourites. Just testing to see, because I'm looking to get the little beads on it. It's raised, a raised dimensional bead. So hold the bottle upright and with a firm hand you go down, squeeze, up, down, squeeze, up, down, squeeze, up, down, squeeze, up and just fill in as many of the spots on this image as you want to. I'm not going to do them all. You can tell that I've had a little bit of practice with this. Now, if you muck it up, don't worry. As soon as they're dry and one of them is sort of misshapen or it's not the size that you want, you can uh, put a, a craft knife underneath because it's enamel and you can flick it off <laughs> and do another one. So, I'm really pleased with that. All right, I've got to bring that back down. I've gone too far up on the camera so can you see it? Can you take it back out again? The close-up's too much. It's my director. I'm having to give my director directions. I don't think it should be like that. Thank you. <laughs> now that will take a good hour or so to dry so I'll mat and layer when it's uh, when it's ready and I really don't want to do any more to that. It's quite pretty. Hope that you enjoyed it. Let's go on to the next card. That will also be using Lavinia stamps and it will be the last one in this video and then I'll be back another day to do some rubber necker stamp rubber necker stamps. Yes, that's better.